Greetings and welcome to World History. My name is Paul Vincent. I will be your son, son or daughter's world history teacher for this upcoming school year. A little bit about myself. Uh, again, my name is uh, Paul Vincent. I've been teaching at Vincent High School for about 15 years now. I've got a bachelor's degree from Concordia University and my master's in professional development at the University of Wisconsin in La Crosse. Uh, a couple other things about me. Uh, married with three kids, three, three beautiful kids, a son and two daughters. Uh, some of the things that I like to do for my hobbies include genealogy, which is studying my family's background. Uh, I like traveling with my family and friends. And I also like learning about new things, specifically about history, things that I've never learned before. So this class kind of suits really well with my personality. Where I am. Well, today, as you can see, I'm obviously not in a classroom. I'm actually on one of my family trips during this summer. I thought it would be uh, appropriate for me to be visiting Copper Falls, which is in the northernmost part of the state of Wisconsin, one of many great state parks that we have in our state. And I would encourage you and your family, if you have the chance, to visit one of these great state parks, uh, even including uh, Milwaukee has a couple of these state parks as well. Take advantage of these parks. But there is a particular reason why I chose this particular type of environment to introduce myself. I wanted to use this backdrop um, to talk to you about world history. The fact that a lot of world history, as far as human history, can be traced back to a time period much in an environment like this. Okay? Whether you're a religious person or not, it is pretty much believed to be fact that a lot of human history started in a type of environment like this, whether it was the Garden of Eden or in the middle of Africa in the jungles of Tanzania, as our students will talk about as well. So this just seemed like the perfect type of a backdrop to kind of give you an idea of where we're going to start the school year in our education of uh, world history. So. What I want to do today is introduce you to how this class is going to be taught, specifically for this next school year, since it is kind of different than many of you have probably ever seen before, or have been aware of before. Those of you that might have had my class in the past might have seen something like this. It's fairly new uh, that I've been doing this last year or two, um, but it's, it's kind of picking up steam throughout the country and throughout the world as a, as a different type of a model for teaching, and I want to tell you about it today. This model that I'm going to talk to you about is called flipped teaching or flipped uh, classrooms. Basically what it is, is if you look at the typical way a classroom works, typically you'd have lectures during school day, students taking notes, and then the teacher gives them homework to take home and complete uh, on their own time. Well with flipped classroom what we actually do is we flipped that around and we basically do the opposite. Instead of doing lectures, at school, now we do the lectures at home and the notes at home. And instead of doing the homework at home, now it's classwork. It's a little bit different, but let me explain to you a few things about it. And I think you'll kind of understand that there's a lot of advantages to it. So, first thing you need to know, with a flipped classroom, obviously, because I'm not there at home for your child to get the lecture, it's your son or daughter's responsibility to get the lecture on their own. They do this usually through the internet. Okay? What you'll actually have see or see me do is what I'm doing with you right now. You'll see me or see your students watching a video of some lesson that I'm trying to instruct to them, showing them different PowerPoints, different um, things going on, just like a regular lecture you'd see in the classroom. But now it's on video, on the internet, or on a DVD. If you don't have a computer, or internet, that's fine. Again, I mentioned DVD. I plan on having DVDs of these lessons take place so you can get access to them that way as well on your television. Or I would also recommend possibly going to the public library, the school library, a family friend, something along those lines if you'd like to use the internet type capabilities that this, uh, this type of method, this flip method offers to you. So if we're doing lectures in or at home, what gets done in class? Well, as I mentioned before, the classwork is done li literally in class. The idea is your child will be doing their homework in class. There's a lot of advantages to this. For me, the biggest advantage is I know the work's getting done 
because I see it getting done in front of me. Another advantage is the fact that I can help your student because they're there. You ever have it happen where uh, your son or daughter can't get the work done because they have this question and the teacher's not there to help them? Now I am. I can be there to help your child with any type of problem they have with the lesson that they might not understand. It lets me assist them where in the past I've not been able to, at, at least not right away. If a student has a question right away, and they're doing this work at home, they might have to write the, write the note down, try and remind themselves what the question is, and if they remember, find me the next day to get me to help them. Now, because I'm there immediately, we can talk to that student, figure out what the problem is, and get them a response immediately. Much better than having to wait the 12 to 16 hours. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Let's look at some other advantages. And I'll just give you a little list here. One, lectures are recorded for your viewing at home, uh, at uh, the library, uh, with a computer, tablet, cell phone, um, TV, whatever. It doesn't matter. You have this opportunity to see these videos uh, in an atmosphere outside the classroom, where it's more relaxing in some cases. Lectures can be paused and rewound which is a great advantage when it comes to those students that need extra time to get the notes down or to better understand the materials. Sometimes students need the teacher to wait. Asking them, Mr. Vincent, can you please hold up? I need to get those notes. This allows your ch ch son or daughter to hit the pause button. Or if your son or daughter doesn't need that, they can just continue on. In the classroom, I would have to wait for everybody to finish before I can move on. Now it's at your child's pace. If they are an exemplar student and they can keep up, they can move on. If they need a little bit more time, a little bit more reviewing to get the idea, or to get the notes down, hit that pause button. Okay. Um, it can be reviewed prior to taking a test or preparing for, an, or the, for their test. Um, great opportunities there. Use it as a quick cram opportunity before the big test. And, as I mentioned earlier, you can do it at your own pace. Those students that need more time, get that time. Where in the past, they may not have been given that time in class. The advantage of doing the homework in class now, as classwork, obviously, is that they get help from the teacher right away. You don't have to wait. Okay? There's more time for group projects and group work to be done in class. In the past, you might only get 10, maybe 15 minutes of group work because the class period is that short with all the lectures involved as well. Now you get a lot more opportunities to get this stuff done in class with a partner, with a small group, and get the work done with the help you need with, with myself or other students being there to help. Homework is done in class. A lot of the problems that I'm seeing as a teacher the last several years is students, they take the tests, but they don't prepare for them by doing the homework or the classwork. Because I'm there, they have to do the homework before they're allowed to take the test. And I will know because I'm watching them doing the work, or I'm watching them getting help from other students, or in some cases I'm watching them copy so I know whether or not they're really ready for the test. Okay. There's also provides me, the teacher, more time to get to know your son or daughter. That is an invaluable thing for a teacher to be able to get to know a student on a personal level, to get to know what sports they're in, who their friends are, who they hang out with. Because then I get an understanding of what that student is about. It also helps me figure out how much effort I need to give to that student as well. Do I need to give this student a lot of extra help because they're a little behind? Or can I push the student even harder to be even better than what they are, better, what they, better than what they think they are, which is what we all want, to try and get your child to go beyond what they think they can do. We can do that now. In the classwork, you'd see me working, if you show up to see me anyway, you'd see me working one-on-one -on -one with your son or daughter. You'd see me working with some of the small groups, analyzing some of the work that they've seen, some of the homework that they've completed trying to figure out some of the answers to the questions I've been asking. In the end, all these questions will help them get a better understanding of history. 
a lot of times in history, the question is not what happened, but why did it happen? Why did this person choose to go to war when he could have chosen peace? Was there an ulterior motive? Okay. It's not just what happened, but why did it happen? And that's what we try and pull out as historians, to see if there were other ways that things could have been done, and what would have happened if these other ways were considered and followed up on. The part that is kind of new for me this year, uh, in some respects, is that because students are doing their work in class, I know, at least I should know, whether or not they're ready for the test. Your son or daughter will not be allowed to take the test until I feel that they're ready to take the test. Otherwise, I'm just setting them up for failure. So here's the deal that I'm making to you and your son or daughter. Is that they will not be allowed to take the test for the grade until they have completed a certain amount of work. They're not going to be allowed to take that first quiz until they've done the prep work and proved that they've done the prep work. Okay? because that's a graded quiz. I want them to do well on it. I'm not going to set them up for failure. They have to prove to me they're ready for it. When it comes to a test, they will have to do at least 50% of all of the homework that I've given them prior to being allowed to try that test. If they still do poorly on that test, they have to try it again, but not before they do a little more work to practice and to follow up and review on the stuff they got wrong the first time. I want them to succeed. I want them to be proficient in every possible, and given every possible chance that I can. They will not be allowed to move on to the next test until they've proven that they've got the information for this test. You can't learn about multiplication until you learn how to add. Same kind of thing here. You can't move on to talk about the fall of Rome until you've learned about what happened bef during its success periods because it's that successful time stuff, in this case, that led to its downfall. You need to understand the stuff before, before you can move on to the new stuff. That's the promise that I'm making to you, your parents, and students. You must prepare for the materials before you take the test, and you will not be allowed to take the test until you're ready. And you're given multiple opportunities to do the best you can. You cannot move on until you get a proficiency grade, which is a, like 75%. Okay, on the test. You get that 75%, you can move on. Or if you want to get that 80 or that 90%, feel free to try again and get that better grade. But you're not allowed to move on until you get that proficiency grade. Now you're probably wondering, how the heck does this work? Some students are going to pass. Some students are going to fail. You can't keep up with all this. Part of this deal is with the flipped classroom is making your student more accountable to their education. My job is to sit back and be the helper, to help to lead them, to give them some help and guidance on how they can go on this journey. To do that, they are working at their own pace. If they are extremely smart students, they'll be moving, they'll be going, they'll be passing tests once every week. If they need a little help, it might take them a week and a half to two weeks to pass that same test. That's okay. The purpose of this is to make sure that your son or daughter does well on the proficiency grades. We want them to know what they need to know before they go to the next step. Not everybody's going to get to the end of the road. But at least they'll have every piece of information that they need for as far as they do get. That's the important thing. That they did end up learning something other than how to get a U. Okay? Everybody needs to pass even if it means that they don't get as far as somebody else does. The other great factor about this flipped classroom that I forgot is it's a motivating factor for students to compete against one another. They see their friends going further and further, faster and faster, being more successful, and they feel kind of left in the back side. Maybe I need to get my butt going. Maybe I need to work harder in order to catch up to my friends. I don't want to be the one in last place. I don't want to be the worst one in class. So this is another kind of a motivating factor for them to work hard and stay focused on their materials. When it comes to grading, as I kind of pointed out, we're using a proficiency scale, which is kind of new. It just started this last year. We'll talk more about that in the introductory part two video, which is right after this. Um, so please click onto that 
when you're ready. And uh, that'll explain the grading. Other than that, um, this kind of concludes part one. Having fun? Yes. <laughs> Other than that, this concludes part one of my presentation on the introduction to world history. Please make sure that you watch and understand how the class is organized, um, that you see how the grading is done, and you see what the ex specific classroom policies and expectations are uh, within my class. I encourage you to go over this video again if there's something that you're not certain of or you want to share with another spouse or family member so they can understand what's going on too. And I encourage you to share this with your child as well so that you know and that they know that this con we've had this conversation. Feel free to give me a call or an email, the information you'll see at the end of the video. If you have any questions or concerns about how the class is run or if you just need to get a hold of me um, to get me some information. And with that, thanks again. I appreciate your time and look forward to working with you and your child this school year. One quick thing also about this whole flipped classroom and doing the lectures at home. Please make sure your son or daughter puts away the iPod, puts away the tablet, gets all that stuff out of here, okay, away from their learning environment. All those distractions only cause your student to pay attention to those other things instead of what they need to be paying attention to, which is the lecture. Lectures are only about 10 to 15 minutes, so I think they can last that little bit without their electronics. You're not going to get the material that you need to know if you've got all these other distractions going on around you. Please encourage your child to put it away while they're doing these lectures. They'll survive that little bit of time without their electronic devices and they'll actually learn something from my class without having other stuff going on as well.